Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing very well and welcome to another edition of Late Night Reviews with Jean. Because <laughs> yes, I am filming this in the middle of the night. Um, and this is also an edition of Mini Reviews with Jean because her phone battery is about to run out. So we're going to try and keep this short and snappy because I used up all of my phone battery on my flash review. So we don't actually have a lot of time for this one. But I did want to share my thoughts on the latest season of Black mirror so even though this is going to be a short and sweet review we do have a lot to discuss so let's get into it i just watched black mirror season six let's talk about it So Black Mirror is of course the Netflix series that was created by Charlie Brooker and it was originally a British series on Channel 4 I think. But then it was acquired by Netflix a few years back and they've since done three seasons of the show um, under them. So we've had three seasons to get used to the Netflixification of Black Mirror and most of you may not know but I actually reviewed uh, season 5 of Black Mirror back in the day. It was on my first reviews on my channel and you can go ahead and check it out and in that review I remember saying I think it was four years ago but in that review I remember saying that I actually preferred the older seasons of Black Mirror the more like British grounded grimy episodes of the show uh, that just felt a little bit more uh, kind of real and a little bit more poignant to me as opposed to the American high budget high production value episodes that we have gotten since Netflix acquired the rights to the show. So I'm actually glad that the show has uh, kept the mix of, you know, some high production value episodes as well as some like, you know, British kind of grimy <laughs> rainy day episodes that just feel a little bit more realistic and relatable to me because I think one of the main charms that I've always loved about Black Mirror is, you know, seeing this very realistic grounded world and having uh, that sort of realism be contrasted or juxtaposed against this you know futuristic technology that Black Mirror is so creative in inventing and we got a similar mix here in season six with the five new episodes of the show but I would have to say that across the board in my opinion these episodes were largely disappointing <laughs> um I was not the biggest fan of the new episodes of Black Mirror um I remember Charlie Brooker saying that one of the reasons why he was holding off on new seasons of the show was because you know real life had just become <laughs> so Black Mirror-esque that he needed a break you know he needed a moment and fair enough to him uh, but I think after such a long break relatively speaking for a show I was expecting a lot more I was expecting something a lot more you know intellectual and avant-garde and groundbreaking the way that some of the previous episodes of Black Mirror have been and instead we largely got a series that looked back more than looked forward. Um, I feel like one of the greatest assets of Black Mirror has always been its kind of prophetic nature where it's able to see into the future of the horrors of technology <laughs> or you know anticipate uh, some of the issues that we'll be facing as a society in the near future. Like I think that's what Black Mirror has done really well. You know, funnily enough historically uh, but with this latest season it seemed like it was taking a look back a lot um, and I think that on top of the you know different kind of tones and genres that this season delved into led to the overall season not feeling very Black Mirror. And then when the episodes this season weren't delving into the past they were kind of just examining the present and as someone who is tragically chronically online <laughs> just awfully chronically online unfortunately i have to say i have seen a lot of the same reddit threads and twitter threads <laughs> that apparently charlie brooker has seen because a lot of this commentary on contemporary issues that we see in season six um was very well known to me and there was nothing really groundbreaking or surprising there both you know in the storylines or even in the subtext of these um, uh, episodes so again I was a little disappointed because one of the
of the things that I loved about, you know, old Black Mirror was the way that it was able to anticipate, you know, problems in the upcoming future, as opposed to just, you know, commenting on what's happening right now. And the fact that this commentary is kind of played out at this point, and it's something that everyone has been talking about all the time, uh, just makes it feel so repetitive as opposed to new and again, groundbreaking. Okay, so we're going to go through my quick, super quick thoughts on each of the episodes of season six of Black Mirror. I only have 15% battery left. So let's go, people. <laughs> Starting us off with Joan is Awful, uh, which stars Annie Murphy as Joan, who's having a terrible day. Uh, she has to fire someone. She's in a, a difficult position with her relationship because her fiance is kind of bland and vanilla in her eyes. And she's kind of falling back in with her ex. And she's, you know, middle management in this, you know, nondescript tech company. And she's not really satisfied with her career or her you know life right now and then you know one evening she's hopping on streamberry which is this world's version of netflix and she sees herself except she's portrayed by Salma hayek except it's not Salma hayek it's an ai version of Salma hayek and it turns out that this is a series based off of her life which she allowed by signing the terms and conditions without reading them and so <laughs> this episode is all about reading your terms and conditions it's all about the prevalence of AI in media which I do think is a problem that's becoming more and more apparent especially you know recently with the writer strike and you know the actors guild everyone's been talking about the use of AI in Hollywood and in the entertainment industry at large so this is very topical but again it's not prophetic it's not like anticipating something in the future this is already happening we've already seen studios resurrect people from the dead using um technology like you know Carrie Fisher and the Star Wars films this is a very hot topic at the moment for sure but I don't think this episode added a lot more kind of commentary or analysis that we haven't already seen I don't think it really added much to the discourse surrounding AI and surrounding terms and conditions and privacy um that we've already seen you know throughout the internet on reddit threads and twitter I also felt that the episode was a little goofy for my taste especially for a black mirror episode it was fun seeing Selma Hayek play herself kind of in this episode but like that's not that's not what black mirror is about <laughs> i sound like a whingy baby i know but i like it when black mirror is just full of like you know unknown actors who are acting as you know real people who are super relatable people that you would see on the street every day especially if you're in the uk um and you know they live in real worlds but they're using unreal technology like the technology is supposed to be the star um not necessarily these characters because these characters can be anyone i think that's kind of the point for the most part uh, for this series so the idea that we would be gushing over Selma Hayek for like half the episode was it was cute for the first five minutes but as it went on it just got annoying to me so overall I would rate Joan is Awful as a six out of ten I would say would be my rating for the episode all right next up we have Locke Henry uh, this was a little bit more compelling to me but it didn't feel very Black Mirror once again it felt like a sort of you know thriller horror series true crime and it was actually hinted at as a true crime documentary uh, in uh, Joan is Awful as she was scrolling through uh, Streamberry uh, but we finally get that episode next up and it centers on this character from Scotland uh, who finds out that his mother and his father were part of this you know evil sex atrocities ring <laughs> who were like kidnapping people and torturing them um, it was wild um but again it just wasn't it wasn't black mirror it was just odd like and it was there was a focus on technology but it was old technology like we were going back to the 90s uh so yeah it was an odd one the episode on its own was compelling i did find the story interesting i thought the actors were great and i thought that the twist at the end was really good and on its own like i said really good episode of a tv series just not necessarily a black mirror episode in my eyes so i would give lock henry 
a 7 out of 10. I, I enjoyed Lock Henry on its own. It just didn't feel very Black Mirror-y. Okay, moving on because I don't have any battery left. Next is, <laughs> next up we have Beyond the Sea, which stars uh, Aaron Paul. And here we have this kind of alternate 1960s America where you have these two um, astronauts. One is portrayed by Josh Hartnett. Um, but these astronauts are kind of you know working in a space station and uh they have their kind of cybernetic counterparts living their lives on earth for some reason even though it should be the other way around but whatever <laughs> they have their robotic counterparts on earth uh until one day uh david the guy that's portrayed by josh hartnett um you know his family gets killed by this like you know religious cult or something um led by macaulay culkin's brother <laughs> one of the Culkins okay by the way he plays a very similar character to the character that he played in Under the Banner of Heaven which starred Andrew Garfield anyways we move on but David's family gets killed off because they're housing an unnatural abomination um and so David is like left struggling in this space station I the whole time I was like someone call NASA where is NASA he should not be allowed on that ship like he should be taken back home he's clearly not going to pass any psych exams anytime soon this is ridiculous um but instead inexplicably he's left there to do his job uh, until cliff aaron paul's character offers to allow him to use the link up to you know hang out with his family and his wife and of course that goes downhill where you know david doesn't want to leave you know he wants to uh, be with cliff's wife who's portrayed by kate mara and he wants to live cliff's life because he lost his entire family and he becomes infatuated with cliff wife um and then ultimately he kills them all <laughs> i listen i'll just say as with many of the episodes of the season i kept coming up with endings that i thought were more compelling than the endings that we actually got for these episodes and for this one i thought it was going to be about vengeance like i thought it was going to be a once upon a time in hollywood situation where david would try and get revenge for his family by chasing after the Culkin brothers cult like i thought that was what's going to happen but instead he just loses the plot and kills cliff's entire family and i don't know i i feel like the descent to madness wasn't quite a, as much of a gradient as i uh, expected it to be considering how drastic that ending was and i do think the ending felt very rushed as well the episode overall was really long too long in my opinion but the ending you know the climax of the story was just really really rushed so i I do think it would have made more sense if he had gone after the cult but instead they decided to make it twisted and dark and cruel and I guess that's very Black Mirror-y um, and there was a focus on technology which I appreciated but I did keep thinking that it was so stupid that David was allowed to stay there up in space considering his entire family had been murdered so I did kind of play on my mind a little bit overall i'm gonna give beyond the sea a 7.5 out of 10 a uh, compelling story on its own a little bit more black mirror related but i still think it was overly long the ending was too rushed and it was just stupid to have david there <laughs> it was dumb like even in a black mirror universe it was stupid as hell that he would be kept on that ship next up we have Maisie Day so Maisie Day uh, starred uh, Zazie Beetz and this was the episode that centered on the paparazzi um, and the kind of paparazzi culture the exposure culture that existed in the late 90s and early 2000s again it's very retrospective it's very kind of looking into the past uh, but here we have Zazie Beetz who portrays a paparazzo and she's going after celebrities trying to get them in the worst light so she can get more money for each of her photos and she's obviously miserable doing this job and what you know breaks the cycle is uh, when one of these celebrities who's caught hanging out with another man uh, ends up killing himself because Zazie's character uh, ended up selling those pictures and they were published and so he was so terrified of that ruining his life especially because this is the early 2000s um and so he ended up you know ending his life and this leads to Zazie Beetz's character turning away from that profession uh until you have this one actress uh Maisie Day uh who 
has mysteriously disappeared and there's all sorts going on with her we know that she killed someone somehow uh but in that world it's just the case of this like mysterious ingenue who's disappeared off the face of the earth and of course the value of images of her have increased as a result and so uh they're offering about 30k to get pictures of this actress 40 if she looks drugged out you know in a ditch somewhere and so zazie is back on it again <laughs> she's back on the bullshit um looking for a picture of this girl because rent is you know rent is due and she needs to pay her bills but in searching for these juicy pictures we end up in a nope situation okay where you know an obsession of trying to record everything could lead to your demise and this time around the actress ends up being a whole like werewolf creature <laughs> she ends up being a whole wow creature and she kills almost everyone except zazzy beats um it's tough like it's weird because i don't know if it she was actually a wet like was it was it metaphorical was it real like it's a very interesting characterization um, and it feels very weird for a black mirror episode because it feels more like supernatural um it was giving teen wolf but whether it was like an actual werewolf that the actress turns into or perhaps it was a metaphor for how much of a monster she feels after um causing the death of that you know male runner whatever it was um it, it definitely feels a little bit more detached from black mirror again uh, than what I am used to and what I expected and that's not necessarily a bad thing you know I keep saying how these episodes don't feel very black mirror -y, um, but some of them are still compelling in their own right uh, so I don't mind that as much but here the episode the message itself didn't feel particularly profound or surprising in any way i mean this is dealing with the paparazzi um kind of culture in the early 2000s which has been commented on time and time again we've kind of all concluded that it was bad and again it's just not the prophetic message that we're used to seeing from black mirror we're very much looking back in the past here um and maybe there's something to be said about the present as well but I wish that was reflected more overtly in the technology and the timeline that this episode covers um because it could have been about you know people trying to track every single movement of a celebrity through their phones um especially because you know now everyone can be paparazzi we have you know TMZ we have people just posting stuff on Twitter or Instagram or TikTok uh, so I think it would have been more powerful to have a more contemporary depiction of this problem where everyone has access to this technology you know we don't have to have massive cameras like the paparazzi used to we just have our phones now but when it comes to Maisie Day as an episode on its own I would say it was my least favorite of the season it was much shorter than the previous episode Beyond the Sea but just as I felt the length of Beyond the Sea it's whole one hour and 20 minutes I also felt the shortness of Maisie Day because uh, that episode was only 40 minutes and it felt like it needed more time to cover the ground <laughs> um, the absurdity of having a werewolf existing in the black mirror universe and finally we have the last episode of the season and that was demon 79 I think this may have been my favourite episode of season six of Black Mirror. So this episode centres on the character called Nida Hug. Get it? <laughs> get it uh she's portrayed by anjana vasan who i recognize from uh, killing eve where she portrays the sad mortician and here <laughs> she's the sad shop assistant um uh, living in the 1970s 1979 in particular and she is one of the only southeast asian people living in her community in i think north england uh where there is a lot of discrimination and a lot of hate uh, to 
towards immigrants during this time i mean this is all historically accurate actually but in classic black mirror fashion just as things appear to be quite normal and average <laughs> uh, you have the twist and this time around you have nita who uh, cuts her finger and the drops of blood fall on a talisman which summons a demon who is brilliantly portrayed <laughs> by papa asedu from i may destroy you guys he is my favorite character of the whole season <laughs> Easily. I know it's crazy because he's a demon, but Papa Asedu's demon character was just like, wow, he was elite. I loved his look. I loved his characterization, his accent. It was just brilliant. It was perfect uh, because I believed him. You know, I was all for <laughs> I was on the demon side and he was right in the end because the apocalypse did come. But the demon is summoned and he instructs Nida to kill three people before May Day in order to prevent the apocalypse. And so now now you have the story that is exploring racism in the 20th century uh, in the UK, especially after World War II, where we had an influx of immigration from people in the former colonies of Britain. Um, so that's a, a really interesting topic on its own. But of course, because it's Black Mirror, we have to throw in something that is entirely absurd. And so now we have this impending apocalypse. Now, I wasn't entirely in love with the direction that the episode went in. I kept thinking that the you know killing of uh people in the community was going to link to the racism theme somehow like maybe she would kill one of the members of the uh, national front or the you know local mp who was spouting hate um in a covert way like i thought it was going to tie in that way um but instead we had these other characters who had committed horrible crimes that were unrelated to her racism issue and so it felt a little bit directionless at times but you know just taking away my expectations of you know where I thought it was going to go and the fact that it is Black Mirror I did enjoy this story on its own you know I thought it was a really compelling story I thought the characterization of Nida was the most complete out of most of these other episodes from the season and again I really loved her interactions with the demon <laughs> and, uh, who was brilliantly portrayed by Papa Asedu so like I said I think Demon 79 was my favorite episode of Black Mirror season 6 and I would give it an 8 out of 10. So now that I told you guys my scores for the individual episodes of season 6 of Black Mirror, I'm going to give Black Mirror season 6 an overall score of 7 out of 10. So that's it from me guys. Now that I told you guys my relatively quick thoughts on Black Mirror season 6, it's time for you guys to let me know what you thought of this season down in the comments below. Please Please be sure to subscribe to catch new videos coming up thank you guys so so much for watching i really really appreciate it and i'll see you in the next one bye